Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. The video camera is running. Oh my god! Channel one emergency? Give me an ambulance out here! What you're about to see in the next 60 minutes is real. Real cops. Real crooks. Real cases. Everything from state-of-the-art training to terrifying shootouts. The most reckless criminals, the most bizarre and unusual crimes ever captured on tape. From high-speed chases to robbery in progress, from impossible rescues to insane crimes of passion. We've gathered this amazing video from departments all over the world. Much of it has never been seen outside the law enforcement community. What you see may shock you, frighten you, anger you. But we bring it to you for one reason. Because knowledge is power. A power that could save your life. I'm Sheriff John Bennell. We've gathered exclusive police video from around the world so you can see for yourself just what it takes to fight crime. Because what you don't know can hurt you. And what you learn tonight might just save your life. So get ready. You don't want to miss a minute of this. Manning, South Carolina. This is Chief Randy Garrett of the Manning PD. Just hours ago, two suspects stole the vehicle during a brutal home invasion robbery. Now they're headed for Manny, and Chief Garrett is here to stop him. He throws a spike strip to slow the suspects down. But they manage to swerve around it. The chief hops in his cruiser and rushes to catch up. Speeds top 100 miles per hour as Garrett flies through a construction zone and joins the pursuit. And with the way the suspect is driving, this veteran officer knows that he's got his hands full. If you're chasing felons, the situation's going to be more high risk than any other. Coordinating their efforts, the Manning PD is determined to end this chase. Garrett moves up to try to pass the suspect. But each time the chief gets close, the driver cuts him off. Finally, the suspect goes too far. Garrett nearly loses control as the driver clips his cruiser at over 100 miles per hour. Now the suspect has crossed the line between dangerous and just plain suicidal. Garrett and the driver lock bumpers again. But this time they're headed straight for a flatbed hauling a bulldozer. The chief drops back and tries to pass again when it's clear. Just like before, the crazed suspect tries to run him off the road. Another officer moves up. The chief tries to sucker the driver into going right, while the other officer passes on the left. But the suspect isn't about to give up his edge that quickly. The officer attempts to force him off the road. But the fearless driver plows straight ahead. That's when Chief Garrett decides to turn up the heat. No matter what, they weren't going to stop unless they were wrecked. Garrett works in closer and tries to force the driver into a spin. Another officer moves forward to help. While both officers wait for their chance to strike, the suspect punches the gas. He rockets onto the shoulder, blowing by a big rig on the right, before charging back onto the highway. Another cruiser catches up and slides past as the driver attempts to block it. But the driver reacts like a caged animal. Swerving viciously across lanes and repeatedly pounding into the rear bumper that blocks his escape. The officer desperately tries to hold on, but the suspect slams him from behind, hurtling the cruiser into a dangerous spin. Anyone that would do that to keep them past, if you do get them stopped, you figure there's going to be a fight. 
Now they've added assault on an officer to their growing list of offenses. The driver darts in and out of lanes in a wild attempt to shake them, but the chief stays close. Finally, it looks like the police get a break. The suspect swings onto the shoulder to pass a semi, but starts to spin out. Incredibly, the driver regains control and roars back onto the blacktop. It was unbelievable. Uh, in most cases that I've seen that happen to Chase and Garrett knows there's only one way to end this chase, and that's with swift and decisive action. The chief spots a perfect opportunity to strike. Garrett watches the suspects fight for control as their car skids and lurches across the highway and flies up an exit ramp. Garrett wisely pulls up and watches as the chase terminates just around the bend. He tried to exit off of the ramp and he wrecked and that's, that's how the chase ended and they were both captured. There's no limit to what a desperate criminal will do to escape justice. But today, these home robbing, cop ramming, car stealing, road warriors met their match in Manning PD's own Chief Garrett. Jackson, Wyoming. It's Saturday night, and this deputy is responding to a bar fight outside a tavern. He parks his cruiser and walks over to see what the trouble's all about. But just around the corner at another bar, one of the regulars is headed home for the night. He knows he's had too much to drink and shouldn't be driving. But if he can just get past the deputy's cruiser without looking too suspicious, he should be home free. Unfortunately for him, the officer has a keen eye for drunk drivers especially ones who smash into his cruiser head on. The driver received minor bruises and a DUI, but that's not the end of the story. The deputy was issued a brand new cruiser, but less than a week later, it too was smashed by another drunk driver. This officer may have found a new way of catching drunk drivers, but can his department really afford it? Montpelier, Ohio. A stolen brown station wagon races through this sleepy Midwestern town. Riding the center line of the highway. Michigan registration 133. Running stop signs. And tearing through a neighbor's backyard garden. The suspect guns the vehicle's overworked engine. One to three, six, Edward Charles Young, Pastor. But this rust bucket roadster is on its last leg. Over 90, 1947. An entire wheel is now threatening to come off. The front tire is wobbling real bad. I think it's going to go pretty soon. Okay. If that wheel falls off, this two-lane highway could become a disaster area. They want this guy off the road now. Up ahead, police set up a spike strip to disable the car safely. Completely surrounded, this daredevil desperately makes one more attempt to escape. It will be his last. Tires screech across pavement. The driver loses control. And the station wagon ricochets off a tree like a one-ton bullet. Police rush in to make sure the young man is all right. Within minutes, he's rushed to the hospital. Officers do everything they can to end high-speed pursuit safely. Get those road spikes. Start up the play. But a crash like this is a grim reminder of the terrifying results that can happen whenever someone runs from the law. Coming up. This is an airspace On world's wildest police videos. With a, knife. a criminal revolution. Renegade robbers. 
spin out of control. An unruly woman wheels into danger. There's a bit in up here. And rioting teenagers turn a street into a war zone. When anarchy takes control, when chaos rules the streets, that's where you'll see Put your hands up. the world's wildest police video. Next. They see it all. From the careless to the clueless. From the heartless to the downright brains. Whatever kind of trouble they see. Put your hands on the car! Cops see it through to the end. In some pursuits, the suspect is so convinced he's done nothing wrong. He'll endanger everyone to prove himself right. Ottawa Hills, Ohio. When an officer signals for a speeding car to pull over, the driver stops right in the middle of the street. Excuse me, sir. Can you do me a favor and just pull right up over here for what me? What did I do? The man's fiance and baby are also on board. For their safety, the officer tells the man to pull over. What did I do? Well, just pull it up over here and I'll explain it to you, all right? I didn't do anything. I didn't pull it over here to the curb. Instead of pulling over, the driver pulls a fast move. Seconds later, the driver is swerving in and out of traffic at speeds of 70 miles per hour, and the police are close behind. The patrolman can't believe the extreme jeopardy the man is exposing his family to. We got a female with a baby. He runs red lights, risking everything. He looks like he has a real chance of getting away. As the driver heads towards the suburbs, he starts kicking up dust at speeds that can kill. As police close in, the man makes a desperate move. He pulls a hard right, but it's too late. He loses control. The driver and his family plow headlong into a tree. Ready for anything, officers rush the car, guns drawn. Her nightmare finally over, the driver's fiance escapes with her baby to safety. Miraculously, both are unharmed. Put your hands on the car! Unbelievably, the driver demands to know what he did wrong. What you pull me over for, man? 49 and 35. Yes, I didn't do no damn 49. But even after he's been cuffed, the man fiercely maintains his innocence. I didn't do 49, you know it. You get in that car, you're gonna have a problem. I didn't do anything. The man claims he didn't do anything, but the courts didn't agree. The driver was later found guilty of felony fleeing and child endangerment. He was sentenced to 90 days in jail. When a suspect runs from the law, he knows getting caught will cost him his freedom. We got a female with a baby. This suspect is lucky his recklessness didn't cost him his family. Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thousands of kids clog the main walkway in the center of town. A local soft drink office has promised them all free tickets to a rock and roll concert. They've been partying through the night, and they're not going to stop until they get their tickets. One problem. There are no tickets at this location. When this innocent ticket seller tells the crowd, the crowd takes it out on him. He's lucky to escape with his life. Suddenly, the party's over. Led by a handful of hellraisers, the angry mob unleashes its fury on the city destroying everything in its wake. Shop owners try to salvage what they can as the frenzied crowd goes on a rampage of looting. Hell bent on taking something, anything, as long as it's free. The police never expected a ticket giveaway to turn into a riot. They start to disperse the highly combustible crowd. Oh, 
A dozen of the ringleaders are detained. Within an hour, the Buenos Aires police have shut the riot down. These kids were promised something for nothing. When that promise was broken, they overreacted, and everyone ended up paying the price. Valdosta, Georgia. A cop has pulled over a driver for a moving violation, but while the officer writes out the ticket, the woman's vehicle keeps moving. Hey, you want to catch your car? It happens more often than you might think. When people get pulled over, they can easily become flustered. Sometimes they forget to do the simple things. This vehicle rolls back into the police car because the driver forgot to set the parking brake. Runaway cars can be especially frustrating after a pursuit. This chase ends in a parking lot. The suspect bolts from his car. But instead of running after the suspect, the officer has to run after the man's vehicle. He catches it just before it rolls into other parked cars. Luckily, the suspect was apprehended soon after. Rolling vehicles are always a potential hazard. After officers yank a violent suspect from his pickup, the truck starts to drift backwards. Now this cop has to do double duty, holding down the dangerous man and holding back two tons of rolling steel. Finally, another officer jumps into the cab and pulls the parking brake. In the heat of action, even police officers can forget to set their brakes. It can happen to anyone. So if you ever get pulled over, don't forget this very important step. Because if you don't, things could go downhill in a hurry. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos, Ballistic Bank Robbers on the road to escape. They are on foot. A ferocious female on the road to oblivion. And a drunken delinquent on the road to disaster. Crooks on the road. Oh, God, he's going to ram this guy. Cops on the move. Put your hands up. Next. Andy, we've got the video camera running. <laughs> the edge of insanity. The edge of escape. They are on foot. The edge of disaster. To catch crooks on the edge, cops have to be sharp as a knife. Somebody got stabbed here. When a suspect in a pursuit goes through a red light at high speed, it's like he's playing Russian roulette. It's that deadly. Ottawa Hills, Ohio. A high-speed chase flies through the streets. The pursuit of this stolen car is already blasted through several jurisdictions. Ottawa Hills PD is determined to end it here. But the suspect is desperate, racing away at speeds nearly triple the limit. A second unit charges into the lead. He refuses to let this renegade get away. Inside the lead car, the officer sees the suspect is now running stoplights. Again and again, the suspect pushes his luck, bombing through intersections. After miles of wild risk, his luck runs out. The unsuspecting driver in this truck has the right of way, but the fleeing car is out of control. It's a devastating crash that spins the suspect out leaving his mangled car crippled on the railroad tracks. Officers from several units approach with caution, but they have to hurry, because by the time they see a train coming, it will be too late. Acting fast, one officer pulls the suspect out of the car and to the ground. Within seconds, several officers are on the man. He's cuffed and taken away. Stealing a car is illegal, but blowing through red lights at 80 miles an hour is brainless. This crash put the suspect in a hospital bed. But when he was released, 
the police had another bed ready for him. And this one was in the county jail. Nobody is more vulnerable than an undercover cop posing as a decoy. All they can do is wait for something bad to happen and hope their backup isn't too far away. Bogota, Colombia. An amateur cameraman captures a terrifying example of street crime at its most brutal. A victim is literally backed up against a wall. He's then violently attacked and robbed by a roving band of young thieves. When they're done, the attackers scatter as quickly as roaches, and they're off to find their next victim. Bogota police are determined to put an end to this type of street crime. They set up a trap. Another brutal mugging, but this man isn't a victim. He's a cop, and he's risking his life to protect the city. After the robbery, the suspects take off down the street and right into the waiting arms of more policemen. Within minutes, they're on their way to a Colombian jail. Here, two women in white blouses appear to wait for the next taxi. But in reality, they're undercover officers waiting to make their next arrest. They have no problem luring their prey. As the thieves approach, they suddenly pull out knives. The women are now just inches away from possible death. One man grabs the officer's purse, while the second man rips the necklace right off the other woman's neck. The screams signal to their partners that it's time to step in. Disguised as part of the marketplace crowd, the male officers tackle the suspects. Two more down, many more to go. Eventually, these stings are successful in curbing sidewalk thievery. And though the officers involved are completely exposed, if it means getting thugs like these off the street, it's all worth it. San Diego, California. A citywide manhunt is underway for two men suspected of robbing a bank. But thanks to a police chopper named Abel, these suspects have just been located. Okay, Abel's got the vehicle. The pilot alerts ground units to the suspect's position. Abel, number two lane, still eastbound on harbor. A posse of black and whites is waiting at the intersection. It's, uh, in this next pack of cars off to your right. That's it, right in front of you, you've got it. But the suspects refuse to stop. The pursuit is on. The driver turns recklessly into oncoming traffic. The suspects lead police on a winding chase through downtown streets. southbound on India. Suddenly, one of the robbers thinks about bailing out. Passenger had the door open like he's gonna bail. But with so many cruisers behind them, the bandits have nowhere to run. So they try the freeway. The driver punches the gas, weaving in and out of lanes in a desperate attempt to elude police. OK, we're north of Lindbergh. We're northbound I-5, passing Pacific Highway, the number three lane. The passenger begins leaning out the car again. But this time, he's not thinking about running. Out and doing something. Uh, I don't know if he's throwing stuff out or if he's shooting, so the units use caution. The suspects hear chopper blades and start to panic. We are northbound on 160. Well, hang on, just worked over. No matter how hard they run, they know they can't outrun a helicopter. Stand by here. The driver swings wildly across the median. Uh, losing control of his car, he is the wrong way on the ramp. The suspect bails out. They are on foot, bailing out. Abel remains the primary unit, coordinating the foot chase. White t-shirt, black pants, black shoes, something on his hand. He's going into the motel. The units are going to have to take him. We're on the second one. Stand by. Ground units close in, and the suspects are arrested just moments later. Go for it. Abel firm. Good work, you guys. Their pockets stuffed with cash. These crooks are facing hard time. Trying to outrun a police cruiser is hard enough. But trying to outrun a police chopper is downright impossible. This helicopter unit gave San Diego PD the edge they needed to bring this chase to a halt. And that's the kind of edge that puts bank-robbing punks like these behind bars.
Able to firm. Good work, you guys. Coming up. This is a dead end up here. On World's Wildest Police Videos. That's a big deal. A bully takes over a sidewalk. He's got his money. A drunkard takes over the streets. Okay. And a madman he is armed with a knife. takes over a 10-ton bus. He's going to ram this guy. When crooks take it all, you better stop. cops try to take it back. Put your hands up. Next. <laughs> Due to the graphic nature of this program, viewer discretion is advised. Big trouble. He is armed with a knife. Thunder in the sky. And this is an airspace nightmare. Thunder on the streets. Wherever trouble rumbles, police roll into action. As fast as lightning strikes. It's tough enough for officers to deal with suspects in a high-speed pursuit. But when police officers have to control the media and bystanders as well, the situation can turn ugly very fast. San Diego, California. Two hours ago, a knife-wielding drug addict stormed this city bus and forced everyone off. The only one on the bus, again, he is armed with a knife. Now he's in the driver's seat, leading police on a wild chase down side streets and freeways. This guy's in big trouble. Officers try to reason with the man on the bus radio. But this crazed suspect isn't listening to reason. Suspect is advising uh, to kill everyone involved. To make matters worse, the chase is being televised on several local stations. Now it's a full-blown media frenzy. The media is still droves. The suspect seems to feed off the attention. The unit's, uh... The driver's demeanor is extremely uh, agitated. He grows more aggressive. Oh, God, he's going to ram this guy. The man veers into another lane, ramming an innocent driver off the road. Hey, boy, I think we just, I think he just rammed somebody. And it's... The battered bus then careens onto surface streets, circling the same blocks over and over. All right, he's headed right back to where this all started. A growing mob of onlookers treats the chase like a game. But for police, it couldn't be more serious. Oh, great. One man turns vigilante as he tries to stop the bus with his car. Not the blade, is it? Just trying to ram the bus. But the chaos is not limited to the streets. News helicopters circle above. Man, this is an airspace nightmare. Making it more difficult for the police chopper. I just want the news story to be the bus, not the crash helicopters. Keeping the bus in sight is almost impossible in the crowded skies above this chase. We're the San Diego police. We're not the FAA. We don't have the authority to order the news media to fly at a certain altitude. Police need to find a way to end this before anyone gets hurt. I wish we had some spike strip. This is ideal. The officer gets his wish. Ground forces deploy spike strips as the suspect circles yet again. It works. Two tires go flat, and the bus begins to slow down. Slowing way down. Finally, the driver stops and throws himself to the ground. Police are on him in seconds. People are taking him into custody. But then the unthinkable happens. In the crush of police and media, a patrolman forgets to set his parking brake. The cruiser bears down on the suspect and several officers. Thankfully, one officer throws himself in the cruiser's path, stopping it. The bus thief is finally taken into custody, but he doesn't go without a fight. It's a wild finish to a bizarre chase. Oh, God, he's going to ram this guy. But amid the media-fueled chaos, police kept their cool and waited for the right time to strike. Thanks to their patience, no one was hurt, either on the ground or in the air. Man, this is an airspace nightmare. And instead of being behind the wheel, this bus-stealing speed freak ended up behind bars. Ottawa Hills, Ohio. 
the tranquility of this neighborhood is shattered by a terrifying high-speed pursuit. The 18-year-old driver of this car has been drinking, and Officer Kolosinski of the Ottawa Hills PD has to stop him. At pulse pounding speeds, he tears up the pavement and part of the sidewalk. The kid frantically tries to outrun the officer, nearly sideswiping several parked cars. The driver leads Kolosinski through the twisted maze of streets. When he sees his chance to get away, he takes it to the highway. But seconds later, he alters his game plan. Then he drunkenly tips police off to his next move. His journey back to the suburbs nearly ends in catastrophe. The driver overshoots his turn and strips the bark right off a large oak tree. The pursuit is getting faster and more dangerous by the minute. And with the driver this blitzed, every turn invites disaster. Not even the neighborhood cat is safe from the driver's intoxicated rage. But as the teen heads back to the highway, his luck finally runs out. The driver sideswipes an oncoming vehicle. From the distance, Kolosinski can hear the sound of metal crushing metal. The officer's first concern is to determine whether anyone in the victim's car is hurt. And though both people are injured, the victims are 100% supportive of Officer Kolosinski's actions. He did what he needed to do. Kolosinski needed to get him off the road. He could have killed more people if he wouldn't have hit us. He could have gone on and killed somebody, and it would have been worse than what it was. The police were excellent. Officer Kolosinski received the victim's endorsement. But then he received something totally unexpected, a wedding invitation. When we were getting married, we realized that Kolzinski is the one that saved us and brought us together. Because the accident, it really drew us closer. And he's the one that made that happen for us. I mean, he really made us realize how much we mean to each other. In law enforcement's effort to catch a drunk driver, Stephanie Frost and her husband became unfortunate victims who got a miraculous second chance at life. This 18-year-old was charged with driving under the influence and aggravated vehicular assault. He was lucky it wasn't manslaughter. Coming up. Somebody got stabbed here. On world's wildest police videos, a walk on the wild side. You better stop. Where a police dog's bite is worse than its bark. A dead end out here. And a suburban bully Put your hands up. rumbles for his turf. He's got his money. Come see where the wild things are. Next. A dead end up here. Put your hands up. Danger in the air. You better stop. A neighborhood bully. He's got his money. A poisonous woman. A murderous plot. Somebody got stabbed here. Officers can never predict who's going to be dangerous. Sometimes, helping a stranger on the highway is like turning over a rock. You never know what you're going to find. Camden County, Georgia. Lieutenant Greg Jackson is pulled over to assist a car on the roadside. But the driver is nowhere in sight. He questions the woman sitting in the passenger seat. And I asked her, is everything okay? And she didn't really answer. And then she looked back down toward the woods. I knew something was wrong. He's about to find out something is very wrong. Right now, as he is talking to her, a violent assault is occurring in the woods off screen. I just wished I was maybe three minutes quicker. Lieutenant Jackson goes to check in with dispatch. But before he can, a man emerges from the woods. What's going on, man? Hello? What's going on? I had to use the bathroom. I used the bathroom. Yeah. And I said, you got any ID? And when he reached in his back pocket, came out with the ID, that's when I noticed the blood on his hands. Stand right here in front of the car from here for a second, OK? The suspect does as he's told. The lieutenant calls for backup. 
23, 26. Go ahead. And a guy come out of the woods, got blood all over his hands. He ain't too coherent right now. While they wait, Jackson confronts the man. Where'd you get all your blood from on your hand from? I ain't got no blood, man. Yeah, you do? What is that? Ain't no lady fighting, but... Where at? Right there. When backup arrives, Lieutenant Jackson goes to question the woman. Her story doesn't match up. I got cut in the leg. <laughs> the cut in the leg? Yeah, got... Who did? No, I got, I got my leg cut in the uh, leg. Suddenly, he spots a screwdriver lying just outside the passenger door. I noticed that the screwdriver had about an inch and a half of blood on the shank of it. Hey, Bob, somebody got stabbed here. There's a screwdriver blood on it. Jackson grills the suspect. Well, who got stabbed with a screwdriver? Now, you just said that blood all the way up that screwdriver like you punched him something now. He knows he's on to something big. While deputies pat down the man, Jackson confronts the woman. Can you step out of the vehicle for me? Who's screwdriver? Yeah, don't blow to me. Who's blood? It's not mine. Her eyes told me that this was not right. She looked down in the woods and looked back up at me. That's when she was getting nervous. She, tell she was starting to panic. She knew that I shouldn't have been there. I came at the wrong time. Anybody else out here in the woods? No, uh -uh. just me here. He doesn't believe her. He sends deputies to search in the woods. While the woman is led to the cruiser, they find the body of a 70-year-old man just beyond the tree line. Hey, give a squad, somebody go. 11, 23, Cam, give me a squad up for 10, 18, 10, 18. We have a homicide. 10, 4. The woman breaks down, but the man stays composed. No. He was calm like nothing happened. The suspects were drifters who had hitched a ride with the man just so they could steal his car. They ended up killing him for it. Both pled guilty for their horrible crime. Now she's serving 10 years in prison. He's serving life. So I thought this was just gonna be a routine disabled vehicle. I just wished I was maybe three minutes quicker stopping with this vehicle, I probably could have saved him. Because I know when I pulled up, he was still killing him at the time when I pulled up. Lieutenant Jackson thought he was helping a pair of stranded travelers, but incredibly, he found himself in the wrong place at the right time and caught a pair of murderers, literally red-handed. Anybody traveling on the interstate or any roadway really should have a mobile phone. If you run into car problems, pull over, put your four ways on, and just don't trust strangers. Dealing with the unknown, goes with being a police officer. In this job, the only certainty is that nothing is certain, except danger. From the brazen to the bizarre. You better stop. From the hot-headed to the cold-blooded. Police officers see it all. There's no such thing as a typical crime. But there are some incidents that are definitely out of the ordinary. Give me your hands. Long Beach, California. This suburban neighborhood is being terrorized, not by gangs, but by a local bully. The man has harassed, threatened, even robbed his helpless neighbor. Now the police are going undercover to catch this bully in the act. He's approaching the bus stop right now on the south side. They stake out an area near the man's house. Right now he's on the uh, south side of the street. I see him. An undercover officer poses as a homeless drunk. Oh, wow. An easy target for someone who preys on the weak. Oh, wow. The suspect wastes no time. Seeing his victim is intoxicated, he grabs the man's wallet. The officer struggles to hold on, but the bully fights him until he manages to rip the wallet away. He's got his money. He looks, he's got his money. Come on in. He's walking away with his money. The police move in. The suspect realizes he's made a big mistake and tries to run. But his helpless victim is right there, ready to take this thug down. For weeks, this bully fed on his neighbor's fear. He had all the power. Let's see how much bullying he'll do in prison. The police are trained to prepare for anything, because sooner or later, that anything is bound to happen. Lowndes County, Georgia. 
A sheriff's deputy stops a woman for driving recklessly. Ma'am, I need to see your driver's license. Like many women, the driver carries pepper spray for her protection. Without warning, she blinds the officer with the spray. Then she speeds off. <laughs> 278, send me some 278. I think I've been sprayed, lad. The deputy is immobilized by the painful attack. He can't even start to pursue the suspect until his vision returns. Our crew is riding with another officer when the call comes in. All units, 278. 278 for F12. 16 southbound. Officer down, 16 southbound. F20, 1080. Southbound with a black line. Bounds deputies respond quickly. They locate the fleeing suspect several miles up the highway, and she's not stopping for anything. When we come back, this breakneck chase reaches the point of no return. Coming up on World's Wildest Police Videos. Lowndes County Police chase the pepper spraying fugitive to the end of the line. There's a dead end up here. Next. A run on the license plate reveals that the pepper spraying woman has an arrest record. This matter has two prior convictions for felony assault. There is an outstanding warrant at this time. She weaves through traffic pushing her Grand Prix past 100 miles an hour. But when she moves into the right lane, officers grab the chance to block her in. Go, 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 go. The suspect sees the trap and veers off the highway, not slowing for an instant. on the two-lane road, this lady desperado goes even faster. She'd rather kill herself than go back to jail. Her Pontiac flies down the straightaway like a jet. The suspect doesn't realize she's almost running out of road. At 3 to 20, you realize there's a dead end up here. 3 to 26, are you coming in from Airport Road? Okay, we'll have her boxed in. If you'll block that road right there, she ain't got nowhere to go. That bridge is out. The deputies turn up the heat. In her panic, the suspect makes a serious mistake. The woman turns onto a dead end. Suddenly, she has nowhere to go. Watch out for a bailout up here. She makes a last ditch effort to reach the woods on foot. But one police unit has a canine officer on board. The dog races after the fleeing suspect. When the woman sees the canine, she wisely stops running and lies on the ground. The deputies make sure the woman isn't holding her pepper spray. They don't want any more casualties. This time, she cooperates. To get away from police, this female felon maced the deputy. She wanted to stay out of jail. She turned what would have been a few months into several years behind bars. Every day, police officers try to prepare for the unknown. You better stop. Because getting caught off guard can be deadly. But for dangerous individuals like these, officers will do whatever it takes to get them off the street. Living outside the law. They think if they just run fast enough and hit hard enough, they can take what they want and get away with it. I ain't do 49, you know it! But they're wrong. When criminals go looking for trouble, they usually find it. That's a big trouble. Especially when the law finds them. 